Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash just no mill. In today's episode. MIL from hell. Out of town in-laws insisting on staying over. We're going to need to see some ID. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. MIL from hell. Me and my MIL go way back on our problems. She came to our wedding drunk, threw a fit at the wedding, and left us and my family to clean up afterwards. I cleaned up after my own wedding. Anyways, not even a month later, we get a letter in the mail that property taxes haven't been paid on the house we lived in at the time. It was hers but we took over all bills when we got married. She told us since we live there we have to pay them. It was a ridiculous amount and every penny of money we got from the wedding we had to use to pay them. We didn't get to use it on anything we had planned with it. Anyway, that's been almost four years ago. Fast forward to now. I have a one-year-old now. When I had my son COVID precautions we still in full swing and I could only have two people in the delivery room. I wanted my husband and mom. Since she works for the hospital I had the baby in, she throws a fit to admin and comes in the room anyway. My baby was born at 32 weeks so it was a high stress situation. I just wanted her out of there. She was bossing doctors around when she's just an ultrasound tech. I let that go. Then she crashes my baby shower that I didn't even want to have because my son was in the NICU. She insisted on throwing it anyway. Now, my son's birthday party was last weekend and she showed out at it. Making petty comments about my husband's father and hogging the baby. Only letting the baby play with toys she's bought and so on. She was admitted to a psych ward for a month, in June, and says she a new person afterwards. I have yet to see any change but okay. She had the audacity to ask us today if she could borrow a gun to keep at her new apartment because she divorced her husband and is scared being alone. Ick what to do about this woman. She is psycho and overbearing and makes snarky comments to my husband about me. I am so tired of it all. How does your husband feel about this? Does he have your back? I would move out of her house and go and see. If you can't, just don't open the door when she goes around, if she has a key, change the locks, do not answer the phone, block her on your social media, diminish her sources of information regarding your life. This doesn't even include her wanting to borrow money, living outside her means, and not even being the one to raise my husband. His grandma who was the exact same way did. Today on the phone, she told my husband to ask the boss our plans for next weekend and knew I could hear her. Ugh I can't. Do not give her a gun. If you are in the US that would be considered a straw purchase and could ruin the life of actual legal buyer of the firearm. Until you start telling this woman no, she will run you life. It's as simple as that. My husband told her no real quick. We told her no about borrowing money too. She just whines and gaslights and plays victim to my husband when she's told no. Your husband has a fantasy of what he wants his mother to be. That's not who she is. Words are just words. Actions prove who and what someone is. People who see the light and realize that they have been treating people badly and behaving badly for years, are going to be deeply sorry and embarrassed and want to apologize or make amends for their bad behavior. When you realize you have wronged another, you want to apologize for the wrong, and make amends and prove that you aren't going to behave badly anymore and by making amends you are going to go the extra mile to do good things and ask for forgiveness. If you are truly sorry, you are going to want to prove you are better and you are going to want the person you have wronged to tell you how you can make up for it. Your MIL after years of abusive behavior, 
it unlikely to have changed and done a 180 after one month of inpatient therapy. That's not long enough to come to terms with the years of abuse they have inflicted. Your husband wants to believe the words, but it doesn't sound like she has shown actions that reflect a new approach to life. I would suggest that you and your husband need to discuss and agree on what actions do you both need to see from her to prove that her words aren't just words that she really has changed and is going to be a better person. Your husband need to do some thinking because he wants a normal mom. But he didn't get a normal mom. He got a Mael. It wasn't his choice, no one gets to choose their parents. He unfortunately got stuck with her. People for the most part don't change until or unless they hit the absolute rock bottom for them and they wholeheartedly realize that they have to change to get out of the mess they are in. They want to get out by themselves. She is who she is and she is unlikely to change. Because she is who she is. She is likely to change her methods to continue to maintain access to your husband. So she is most likely using the one month inpatient stay as a way to say she has changed and you should forgive her. He needs to think about what proof does he need from her to prove that she has changed so that he won't be hurt again. If she truly has changed, she should be rallying all over herself to prove she is different than what she was. Hope this helps. Give her the gun. Just kidding. First, if you are tired of paying taxes, etc., regarding that house and taking into account that was an agreement, you should just move to another place. If not, do not complain about something that was an agreement. I would move from her house and start an independent life. Also, it is okay to say no to things that make you feel uncomfortable. If you do not want something, just say it in an assertive way and do not let others to impose their ideas over yours. If you would have read my other comments, we moved from that house a year and a half ago and bought our own. We had to pay back taxes for a house we weren't even living in. It got dumped on us. She never once told us they weren't paid in two years. I am not complaining about something that was an agreement. We had no idea there was back taxes that haven't been paid on the house. I don't think that having to pay property taxes is bad but I think the entire gun thing is insane. Sounds like boundaries need to be and enforced, but also where the hell is your husband? If he isn't doing anything then he is enabling her. Silence is compliance. I'm trying to figure out why you let her get away with all of it. Why not refuse to pay the back taxes and move somewhere else? Why not tell the doctors or call security to get her out your room? Why let her come to the birthday and then let her show her ass? Where is your backbone? Where is your husband? Seriously people get away with what you let them get away with. Toxic people and abuse are still toxic people and abuse, even if they're family. You have a child to think of. Are you going to allow them around her toxicity because she's family still? What about their mental and emotional health? What about yours? Out of town in laws insisting on staying over. Long time lurker, first time poster on throwaway. My MIL is not necessarily a JN, not in comparison to some of the wild stories I've read here. That said, my partner and I have been together nearly five years, they live six hours away and he is not close with them yet from the moment I've met her she's wanted to be BFFS, call me her daughter and tell me she loves me which I've never been comfortable with. Being they don't have a close relationship and I'm the extrovert while my partner is the introvert, I'm always forced to lead the forced conversation when they're here. We don't have much in common and have very different lifestyles so the few times they they being MIL and SFIL, visit it always makes me anxious and I can't wait for the weekend to be over. All that said, we have a child, another on the way and whenever they come to visit, they stay at a hotel but spend all day at our home. They've always asked to stay over but our house was small and didn't allow it. 
We recently moved and have more space but still do not have a guest bedroom for them. They've apparently lost their deal, they got on a local hotel and are insisting they stay at our place and will sleep anywhere. I hate the idea of not being comfortable in my own home having them here and being anxious and uneasy the whole time but worry I don't have a legit reason to say no. My partner would go along with anything anyone says and would without me, be fine with them on our floor, but in the end, will support my decision. Am I unreasonable? How can I tell them no and end it? We are not hosting overnight guests. If you need to cancel and try another time, I understand. Don't do it. Not wanting them up your ass 24 hours a day is a legit reason. And put an end to the all-day visit too. Okay, you guys enjoy your time together, I slash the kids and I are headed out, see you later or meet them at an activity, drive two separate vehicles, it was lovely seeing you, let's do lunch tomorrow. Bye. No. We are not set up for guests, and we do not want anyone sleeping on the floor. We will help find you another hotel, but you are not staying here. You don't need a reason, it's your home. That doesn't work for us. Your partner needs to take a more active role in dealing with his family. Introvert or not. Agreed. We've been seeing counselors separately and that's helped him realize his family is his problem but we still have a ways to go. I'm sorry, but that won't work for us. I've been extra tired w this pregnancy and chasing a toddler. I am not up for hosting that many hours in a row. If a hotel won't work this time we should just reschedule for another time. If you offer less they may stop pushing for more. But don't cave or there will always be a problem w their hotel. Especially after second baby arrives. If they say they can help so you can rest, thanks but no. I won't be able to relax while I have company. The best thing for us is to have downtime and keep LO on her evening schedule. If they push past this it's totally okay to be extremely blunt. I said no. Let's reschedule. And then don't. This sounds appropriately diplomatic here noting that it's a relatively conflict-free relationship. Keep enforcing your boundary. They can stay at a hotel or cancel the visit. If you let them stay this time they will want to stay at your house every time they visit. They'll likely stay longer than a weekend. Hold your ground. No. Sorry, that doesn't work for us. Here are some local hotels and Airbnb listings. Also, give time limits. Don't let them stay all day. You have enough on your plate. Thank you for this. I always feel bad when I try to set boundaries of times they can visit and try to suggest options outside of the house but they always insist since they're only here minimal time they want to stay as long as possible at our place. Definitely say no. Because if you say yes, it will set the precedent for every visit afterwards. They will say, but last time we stayed with you and it was fine, and will weasel their way into your house. Hold firm on your boundary. We're going to need to see some ID. As you may remember, my SO's mom tried to ruin a surprise party that I had planned for my SO's birthday, by having her own party as I was literally putting in the finishing touches and welcoming guests at my home. Well, that isn't all she's tried to ruin. A small bit of background. My SO's family is quite religious. They were very cultish in a number of ways. Therefore, anyone that was from their church was to be believed without question. And anyone that didn't fit into their vision of how their family should be structured was a big nope. On to the story. I had just moved into a small town that upheld every cliché that you can think of. Not born there, you were a dangerous stranger. Friendly and outgoing. You were pushy and must have an agenda. So, I got a job working at the town factory. 
I worked the third shift, from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. After a few months, I moved up the ranks pretty quickly. They even sent me to school to specialize in a coveted singular position. This, of course, created much animosity. Because my position was so specialized, there were only two other people that performed it. One for each shift. As my shift ended, I would hand off my workstation to the next person, give them a briefing on where the work stood, and exchange the most surface of pleasantries. My counterpart had a second job in a grocery store. And she just so happened to work with my SO's baby sister. She was also a member of the family church. Can you see those storm clouds gathering against me? The sister and the counterpart soon figured out that they had me in common. Again, very small town. The sister was saying how worried the family was about so, because they didn't know anything about me, except that I was a West Coast heathen, that, gasp, didn't belong to any church. But, counterpart had the best news. I was a LR. I wasn't from the West Coast. In fact, I grew up in the next town over, and counterpart had gone to high school with me. Baby sister ran home with the good news. They now had a legit reason to lobby against me. So would surely see what an evil presence I was and had to end things now. So, they asked him to come home for an emergency family meeting. They carefully laid out all of the evidence against me. They had yearbooks with my picture in them, class photos with me listed, playbills from school productions that I was in. Oh, wait. No, they didn't. They had the word of a jealous person who was angry that after less than six months I was put into a position that took them years to attain. I was also at a higher pay rate, because I took the offer of school, whereas she had turned it down. But, church. My, my so was pretty angry at all of this nonsense. He told them to drop it right freaking now. And he didn't care what they thought. What mattered was what he thought. And they better not bring any of this up with me. But, but. How can so just take my word over the random person he had never met and didn't know? They finally said that the only way that they would back down is if I would provide documentation as to my previous residence, including a driver's license and a birth certificate. And my divorce papers, because according to counterpart, I was still married. He left and told me all about it. Now, this nonsense was at the beginning of our relationship. We hadn't even moved in together yet. He told me under no circumstances was I to entertain any of their paranoia. He said that they might be sneaky, and try to trick me into showing them proof. But the best way to handle them was to just stare blankly and then change the subject. I was kind of dumbfounded. This was a whole new level of crazy for me. To this day, his sisters don't believe me, and this is after us being together for nearly 20 years. Rotful. I so get the small town crazies. About, about 20 years ago, I was living in a tiny little town. I am the only person in my town with my last name. I'm not from there, and there was no chance I would ever be considered one of them. With luck, Maybe my grandkids would, maybe. I, I was friends with another transplant and the only open-minded woman I ever met there that was from there. There was a hot-button issue going on with the local school district and everyone was talking about it. And me, because I started a website to cover the topic. I was in a local store one night with the local friend and the woman checking her out was chatting about the issue. She then went on to talk about me. How she had known me since I arrived, where I'm from, all the dirt. She didn't manage to pronounce my name correctly. My friend just let her go on. When she finished, I asked for a pack of cigarettes. I don't smoke but my friend does so I bought her brand. The checker got them and said she was sorry but she had to card me. I knew that, 
that's why I did it. I handed her my ID. She looked at it, then me. Then handed it back with the cigarettes. I paid, looked her in the eye and said, you know, for someone so determined to get the Ten Commandments posted on school walls, you certainly seem to miss the one about bearing false witness against a neighbor. Until now, you had never met me. Yet you just spent ten minutes lying about me and acting as though you know me. Shame on you. Then we left. My friend thought the look on her face was hysterically funny. But that is life in a lot of small towns. I have found that small towns founded by Catholics tend to be more friendly than those founded by Baptists. I think it's the beer. So, part of my brain was going, 20 years ago, backward small town like the one I grew up in, I can see this drama unfolding. It was like, the 80s, and small towns were still fairly isolated culturally. And then I remembered that 20 years ago was in the 2000s. There is no excuse for this craziness. Yeah, my thoughts exactly, thus the 80s were 40 years ago. I feel so old now. I was born in the year 2000 so unfortunately I will always be aware of exactly how old I am. 2005. I was 5. 2022. I'm 22. In 2056. I'll be 56 etc. Sounds like Alabama. I almost spit my drink out with this comment. I'm sitting here thinking it sounds like Tennessee. Anytime you're alone with any of them drop the veil slightly and bring up something from the alleged past. Look up some old teachers from the neighboring town and be like, this reminds me of Mrs. Green from Algebra, or, this food tastes like, insert restaurant from next town over, food, I used to love this when I was in high school. It will make them mental. Your so comes from a place that has that special kind of crazy. I'm glad y'all overcame that craziness and that your husband wasn't affected by it. Sounds like you got a good one OP. I truly did. Show us your papers, comrade. Papers, please. Anyone else hearing banjos? Ba ding ding, ding ding, ding ding, ding. I wonder if it's not that they still don't believe you, but that they invested so much time and energy into the lie that they can't back down now and admit they were wrong. They need to uphold this view because they sure as hell won't apologize. If you presented them with your birth certificate they would have demanded a long form one. Yup, the goal posts would leave earth orbit pretty quickly when any evidence is presented. And then the university records and then claim you faked them. Repeat ad infinitum. They are birthers through and through. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.